One of the techniques that you might choose to do with your applique is something called turned edge. This example that I've got here of this flower has actually been done in the fused technique, but this is what we're going to create, this kind of flower style, creating these petals. So the first thing that we need to do is get our petals sorted. So the pattern itself, I've printed onto uh, some wax paper. And the advantage of wax paper is you can use this and temporarily fuse it to your fabric. So it saves you having to use pins when you're actually cutting out your pattern pieces. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use an iron. That will allow me to get the wax paper fused to the fabric. And then all I need to do is to, to cut them out. Now, when you're working with turned edge, you will need to consider which is going to be your actual edge of your fabric, your folded edge of the fabric. So you might need to actually cut outside of the finished edge, like I'm doing here, just so as you can accommodate for that turn or that needle turn. And that's where you're going to just fold the fabric underneath as you hand sew it in place. Now, I have got a bit of a hack that I will share with you which is a way of getting that result without it being quite as tricky as a, a hand um, hand stitch effect or the turned effect, should I say. So I'm just going to cut out a couple of these pieces. And again, I'm just going to do it on the outside. And it will be a turned edge, but one of these we're actually going to sew on the sewing machine. So I could technically take this to the sewing machine and uh, stitch on the the black lines, but I'm just going to cut out one piece just so as I can show you exactly what I'm doing when we get there. I've got two petals there that I'm going to be working with. So the wax paper, I can just take that off and it hasn't actually put anything onto the fabric at all, but I can reuse that if I wanted to iron it onto the next fabric, then I can use that. Probably fine you can use it for about half a dozen times or so. So I've got two pieces that I'm going to be working with and that one piece I'm just going to leave with the paper on just for the time being. The way that you would work with turned edge applique is you would have your fabric, your backing fabric. Of course with applique you always have a backing fabric and then you would have your petal. So you kind of got to visualise or draw out the design that you are creating. Then you need to get your pins to actually keep your fabric piece in place but you don't want the pins to be too close to the edge the reason being when you're actually stitching it you're going to need to, to turn the fabric in so just enough pins to make it secure so probably get away with just a couple there might want to put one down at the bottom let's put one down that way as well and they can go in all sorts of directions but the idea being is that you don't want that fabric to move around too much put those there so I don't knock them over <laughs> then you've got a couple of choices you can either hand stitch it using the fabric in your hand or you may prefer to put it into the hoop. I'm not a big user of hoops I must admit when it comes to um, hand embroidery but if you do want to you can do so I'll try and show you how to do it that way as well. So what you would do is you would thread up your needle with a, um, a thread that's in keeping with the fabric that you're working with because the idea behind turned edge is that uh, you don't see um, where the stitches have been. My thread's here quite long so let me just pull that down, double it up a little bit. Don't have you thread whenever you're hand sewing any longer than from your wrist and to and it's supposed to be to your elbow really but that's a big piece but we'll see how we get on. So the idea is that when you're actually stitching you're going to come up from the back of your fabric inside of the edge so as you won't see that thread. You can start at whatever point you like. A good point to start really would be at the point of the petal because we're going to be putting a piece on top afterwards but uh, it doesn't really matter and the idea being is that you're going to fold under the edge as you pick up the fabric so you're going to pick up a tiny bit of the fabric from the top this is why I don't really like doing it in the hoop so I'm going to take it out the hoop if that's okay obviously you might get on with the hoop better than I do but there you go so when you're stitching you're going to fold under the fabric and you're going to catch the fabric kind of on the bit that's folded up under and come out on the edge so you can see it's very very small detailed stitch that you're going to be doing and then you will take the thread through which is why you don't want your thread to be too long and then you'll go back down into the fabric that's kind of inside of the petal outer area and then you would fold under the next bit this is why it's called needle turn because quite often people will take the needle and turn the edge of the fabric underneath like so and then catch it now the first few stitches are always the trickiest ones to do but you're going to just literally catch the edge of your fabric 
and then turn it through. Now I'm not a huge fan of hand sewing so this technique isn't one of my favorites but I have got a little bit of a hack that I will show you how you can kind of get that result without having to do the hand sewing and taking the time to do it. So it's just take a few moments just to literally go underneath so you can't see the stitch. It's going to be hidden under the petal and then you can just come through that folded edge, the selvage and then up into the main body of the petal. And as it goes in place, you kind of can just push it underneath as it goes. You keep your stitches small, as small as you can, going underneath. I tend to go underneath and pull the thread through. Maybe not necessarily do it all in one action. Pull the thread through and then get a little bit of that salvage edge, especially while you're just getting started. And this is why sometimes it's a good place to start where you're not going to see it. So when you actually come down to the bottom edge, You'd be covering that over that center of the flower maybe with a button or an other little piece of fabric and as you turn it you'll you'll kind of see it will fall into place so first few stitches might need to be a little bit forgiving and then you work your way through like so and then what will happen is keep poking that fabric underneath as you're pulling the thread stitches tighter and you can see that you kind of get that turned edge result as you sew. So this is my easy method of doing turned edge applique. So I've got one of the petals. So again, we saw the petal just a few moments ago. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch it with the right side facing down into a piece of medium weight interfacing. Lighter, the better, to be fair with these, but that's the only one that I've got to hand at the moment, so that will have to do. And then all you're going to do is you can put a couple of pins to keep it in place and make sure you've got plenty of room outside of your petal as well because we're actually going to stitch through this now I've left it in place so as I've got the stitch line but you don't technically have to keep that wax paper I've got wax paper from when I traced it out earlier on but that is showing me the line of the the outermost piece so that's why I've left that so as I can stitch through the whole thing so all I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to a sewing machine with a small stitch maybe one and a half two millimeter stitch and stitch completely around that petal shape so there's no turning point we're going to stitch completely around it so i've got my petal on my interfacing and i'm going to drop the needle down if you have a machine that has a needle up needle down option then it's good to have it as a needle down so as each time you stop then you are going to find that needle drops into your fabric and all i'm going to do is i'm going to follow that black line that we've got for the petal so go slow and steady don't go too fast if you've got um, a limiter on your machine you might want to actually use that so as you don't go scooting ahead too quickly and then all you're going to do is follow that line keep the stitches nice and small because that will help when you actually come to turn it through in a few moments so just work your way around if you need to reposition, then the needle is down, you can do so. Oh, got a thread caught up at the back there. Let me just trim that away. And then just keep going. Just slow and steady. Threads. So there we go. I've stitched all the way around. So just to get rid of those little loose threads, and then I'm just going to cut the petal out of the interfacing. So just follow that round. Okay. And then because we've got the wax paper on there, you won't be able to reuse the wax paper if you leave it in place. So you might want to choose not to stitch through it so as you can reuse it. But I'm just going to remove the wax paper. And because the, uh, the stitches are perforated, it's pretty easy to do. There you go. And then what we're going to do is take a pair of scissors and separate up the layers. So pull the two parts apart like so, and then just cut into the interfacing. And what you're doing is you're creating 
the opportunity to turn the design through. So you just need a little bit of a gap. But before that, what we're going to do is we're going to snip around the edges all the way around so as it makes it easier for us to turn through. Got a pair of pinking shoes, you could use that if you wanted to. But you're going to snip up to the stitches, not through the stitches, all the way around the edge. So I'm just going to turn that through now. So it can be a bit fiddly to start with, but you're just going to feed everything through and turn it inside out. Once you get started with it, it's not too bad. And because you've got the um, interfacing rather than paper, then uh, it will allow you to turn it through. So just get it all the way through. There you go. Use your finger or knitting needle or something like that to, to get it right the way through. Okay, so you see how it's all coming together. You've got a tight bit at the bottom, then you can just kind of pull it through or get something that you put through. Just be careful if you're using scissors. You shouldn't really use scissors, but yeah, we all do it. So now you can see that you've kind of got that turned edge that you were doing with the hand sewing. So all you're going to do with that is bring in your, <laughs> bring in your pressing mat and give it a bit of a press. And you can see you've kind of got that turned edge look to it now. And then I'm going to bring that in next to the other petal that kind of started and place it. So instantly it looks way better. And then all you would do is a similar sort of idea, get a couple of pins in place just to stop it moving around. And then do your stitching in the same way. So come up underneath, out the way, a couple of little stitches just to secure your, secure your thread. And then you're going to take the stitch up to the fabric. So it's the fabric just where the little turn is. And then take the second stitch just underneath, so where you can't see it. And then just continue doing that. A little stitch into your backing just underneath so you can't see. It's literally just a couple of threads that you're taking in the fabric. And then fabric. And then you'll find that with this one, I personally find it's a much neater way of actually doing it. And you're still getting the joy of doing your hand sewing. So turned edge or needle edge, or ne sorry, needle turn, turned edge or needle turn, the idea is to keep the stitches out of the visible eye. It's quite a skill, but you can see the kind of results that you get. And I personally just find that's an easier technique than turning it as you go. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more of our tutorials.